First off, we'll be looking at the core sorcerer skills, of which we've seen five in action, two of which are returning from Dragon's Dogma, and three are new to the series Specialist Spell Slinger. These five core skills are Magic Bolt, Galvanize, Quick Spell, Bursting Bolt, and Levitate. Magic Bolt is up first, and it is described as firing a magical burst that differs based on the active enchantment. This can also be cast while moving. Magic Bolt's advanced version is Focus Bolt, and it has also been spotted in the Tokyo Game Show build, that when upgraded enables the Arisen to fire multiple bolts. Both Magic Bolt and Focus Bolt can add elemental effects and damage via enchantments depending on the arch magic used, and the effect when using these skills varies depending on whether a permanently or temporary enchanted weapon is used. The next returning core skill is Levitate, which manipulates the caster's weight through magical means, allowing them to temporarily float. Certain treasure chests and areas are much more easily accessible when using the Levitate skill. Next up is the core skill Galvanize, which is the sorcerer's heavy attack rapidly recovering stamina through a single-minded focus. It can also be employed while moving, but with reduced efficiency. The fourth of the core skills is Quick Spell, which is a vocation action which greatly hastens incantation speed at the cost of consuming stamina. The final of the Sorcerer core skills that we are going to talk about and we know of thus far is Bursting Bolt which stores up magical energy before unleashing it in a powerful burst that explodes sometime after connecting with the target. And this effect from Bursting Bolt also differs based on the active enchantment on the Sorcerer at the time of activation. Moving on, within the Dragon's Dogma 2 footage and reveals we've seen a total of 14 Sorcerer skills so far, 6 which are returning skills from DD1 and the remaining 8 are completely new to the franchise. The first two returning Sorcerer Weapon skills is Levin and High Levin, which is described as strikes an enemy from above with tongues of lightning. Levin and High Levin can also summon additional lightning bolts, however at the expense of more stamina. All forms of Levin could be cast using a Staff or Arch Staff and strikes foes from above with thunder based magic. In addition to the damage of the spell, it may either knock down small enemies or stun larger ones if susceptible. In DD1 Dark Arisen, you could also upgrade High Levin to Grand Levin, however there has been no evidence that Grand Levin will be featuring in Dragon's Dogma 2. Next up is Frigga which conjures a giant pillar of ice that lingers for a period of time and can serve as a stepping stone. After the pillar is destroyed, grabbable blocks of ice will remain. Ice spires and explosions from the destroyed ice blocks have the chance to freeze enemies. The spires have good knockdown and will lift smaller enemies into the air. Within Dragon's Dogma 1, Frigga could be upgraded to High Frigga, and further within Dark Arisen, this becomes Grand Frigga, with a suitable Mage Ring, Band or Staff Bearer's Band equipped. As described, these advanced versions of Frigga also create ice platforms that can be used when exploring to reach hidden treasures and gain access to otherwise unreachable locations. The next of the Sorcerer Weapon skills is Seism which is a holy base skill which when cast strikes the earth sending eruptions of stone into the air stunning and damaging foes over a wide area. Enemies caught in this area take pure magic damage, whereas the summon pillars exploding from the ground deal holy magic and possess high knockdown power. Finally, the large boulders created from these summon pillars may strike foes on landing for substantial physical damage. Within the original Dragon's Dogma, Seism was upgradable to High Seism, and then within Dark Arisen, this becomes Grand Seism, with each upgraded version decreasing the casting time and increasing the amount of pillars created. 
Bolide is up next, a fire-based skill with which your Arisen calls meteors down from the heavens to land around you. In DD1 and Dark Arisen, Bolide could be upgraded to High Bolide and Grand Bolide respectively, where the base Bolide summons 4, High Bolide 10 and Grand Bolide 15 meteors that deliver both physical damage as well as fire-based magical damage. The targeting of multiple foes makes this spell effective against groups of enemies but less so against a single large enemy, such as a Cyclops, which will be hit directly by only two of the Meteors. Creatures with multiple heads on the other hand like Chimera or Hydra are considered to be multiple targets, with each of those heads being targeted once, making this spell extremely effective. The last of the returning sorcerer weapon skills is Maelstrom, which summons a whirlwind to wreak havoc upon any foe caught in its path. Maelstrom inflicts dark magic damage, drawing enemies into its core and throwing them into the air for additional fall damage. After a long charging incantation, during which the caster is immobile, the spell begins to be cast. After incantation charges the spell, a holding phase begins whilst the caster continues to be immobilized. During this phase, the whirlwind will begin to generate. The character will be locked into the final casting position, after which the whirlwind begins for a substantial period of time. Within Dragon's Dogma 1, Maelstrom upgrades to High Maelstrom, with a larger area of effect, longer duration and a stronger pull. The remainder of the Sorcerer weapon skills are brand new to the Sorcerer in Dragon's Dogma 2, the first two of which are Flagration and High Flagration, which are described as unleashing a swirling jet of flames straight ahead for a period of time. The flames ignore magical defenses and can pass through multiple targets, and while all of this is happening, the caster is still able to move. We currently don't have any detailed description for High Flagration any more than it is the advanced version of the basic Flagration skill. The Salamander skill is up next, which conjures a flame that slithers forward along the ground. The flame remains for a time and deals continuous damage to any targets that touch it. The Thundermine Sorcerer skill is described as conjuring a ball of lightning that automatically unleashes crackling bolts at foes who draw near. The bolts also knock down smaller targets, which dissipates in time or after a number of attacks. The Sorcerer skill Haggle is described as summoning a bone chilling blizzard to the immediate vicinity that damages any targets that touch it and inflicts them with frostbite whereas the Decanter Sorcerer skill saps the target's health and grants it to the caster. The effect continues for as long as the spell is maintained, but the user must remain stationary. The final two Sorcerer weapon skills unfortunately we do not have any descriptions for. These are Persistent Flare and Spell Hold. I guess we'll have to wait and see until launch day what these two are all about. In addition to the 19 weapon and sorcerer core skills, we also know of 5 sorcerer augments that will be coming to Dragon's Dogma 2, being Asperity, Stasis, Constancy, Catalysis and Sagacity. The first in which Asperity increases the likelihood of inflicting debilitations with your attacks, whereas Stasis reduces the rate at which items deteriorate. Constancy augments your knockdown resistance, whereas Catalysis increases the damage dealt when exploiting a hostile target's elemental weaknesses. And last but not least, Sagacity augments your sorcerer's magical powers. First off, we will be looking at the core warrior skills, of which we have seen seven in action, and all of which are new to the series Aggro Pulling Close Combat Chardonator. These are Mighty Sweep, Stone Splitter, Barge, Bulwark, Breakneck Strike, Chain of Blows, and Repulse. Mighty Sweep is up first, and this is the Warrior's Light Attack, sweeping its Greatsword or Great Hammer in a horizontal arc. 
And if you are holding down the activation button, this attack turns into a charge slash, making your warrior much less likely to flinch during the animation. The second warrior core skill is its heavy attack in Stone Splitter, which with you perform a mighty downward slash, followed with a powerful successful strike if in the case the first blow connects and the foe has been knocked off balance. The third of the core skills is Barge, which is a vocation action, with your Arisen rushing forward, tackling the target. Though limited in range, it can force the target to flinch, whilst at the same time resulting in your warrior being less likely to flinch during the skill's activation. The fourth warrior core skill is Bulwark, which diminishes the damage received from adversaries when executing a charged attack. Next up is Breakneck Strike, which elevates the potency of charged attacks by delivering it at the precise moment it reaches full charge, dealing increased damage. The sixth core warrior skill is Chain of Blows, which utilizes the user's momentum to release an extra mighty sweep, capitalizing on the kinetic energy generated. Last but not least for the warrior core skills is Repulse, which counters a hostile target's assault by executing a charged attack capable of disrupting the target's balance, providing a defensive advantage. Within the Dragon's Dogma 2 footage and reveals, we've seen a total of 13 warrior weapon skills so far, one which is returning from Dragon's Dogma 1 and remains mostly unchanged, whereas a further 12 skills have been revealed that are new to the franchise, although some comparisons can be made to the skills from the first game. Savage Lash is the first and only returning warrior weapon skill, and it is described as channeling the user's strength into a devastating hit that grows in power the longer it is charged. In DD1, Savage Lash could be upgraded to Indomitable Lash, and then further enhanced with In Dark Arisen to Calamitous Lash, with a suitable Warrior's Ring or Warrior's Band equipped. Properly timed blows from these upgraded versions would result in flying shrapnel and a devastating shockwave that inflicts additional damage and staggers or knocks down all enemies not directly struck by the blow. However, Indomitable Lash and Calamitous Lash have not yet been confirmed to feature in DD2, but there is an argument to be made that at least one of these skills will feature as the upgraded version to Savage Lash. Next up is the warrior skill Skyward Sunder, with which you jump up and deliver slashes skyward simultaneously, swinging the blade in mid-air. This attack can also be charged prior to unleashing it. The upgraded version of Skyward Sunder is Heavenward Sunder, further increasing the damage dealt when fully charged. Skyward Sunder and Heavenward Sunder appear to be the replacement skills for Upward Strike and Whirlwind Slash from Dragon's Dogma 1, and deal a healthy amount of knockdown when landing. Traditionally knockdown enemies take double damage whereas smaller knockdown creatures can be grappled which greatly increases the damage dealt. Rending Sweep is up next, and it is described as whirling the blade with formidable force, cleaving through adversaries in every direction, and it can also be charged before execution. We also know at this moment in time that Raising Sweep will be the upgraded version of Rending Sweep, and these appear to be the replacement skills of Spark Slash and Corona Slash from DD1 which had great knockdown properties affecting all that come in contact with it. Next up is Bellow, with which your Arisen utters a command shouting to attract the attention of hostile targets. This will be the replacement of Warcry from the original game, and as described, in essence pulls aggro onto the warrior for a short duration, allowing the rest of your team to attack the distracted foes. The next warrior weapon skill is Goring Attack, with which the Arisen or your pawn charges forward, impaling targets with the blade. Pressing the activation button again delivers a forward stab, with which the warrior utilizes the momentum generated piercing enemies and slamming them into walls, which intensifies the impact. As described, Goring Lunge will be extremely useful against packs of stationary grouped enemies and downed giant monsters, 
however may not be effective against creatures with high physical defenses. The next warrior weapon skill is Ladder Launch, which enables the user to plant their feet and launch an ally into the air from their shoulders. Obviously, this is great for when trying to weigh down a hovering flying creature, such as a griffin, with your pawns. And pawns are also likely to use Ladder Launch in an attempt to aid the Arisen in the presence of large creatures, including cyclopses, ogres and so on. And in addition, pawns are also likely to use in-air heavy core attacks if they are unable to grab onto something mid-air. Next up is Surging Strike, with which your warrior leaps skyward and descends with a blade, utilizing the full weight of the user for devastating strikes. This deals additional blows to smaller flinching targets, and is executable while airborne, with increased potency from higher elevations. The next warrior skill is Revivify, which bestows the user with a renewed vigor, alleviating some debilitations, such as being caught in fire, the frozen sleep silence and unconscious status effects. Moving on to Skyward Lash, which channels the user's strength into a devastating hit that grows in power the longer it is charged. Nullbreaker is then the next warrior skill, with which your warrior elevates the blade with a forceful thrust, delivering a robust blow capable of destabilizing targets or rendering them unconscious. Nullbreaker can also be charged up to a maximum prior to releasing it for attack. Next up is the warrior core skill Gale Slash, which harnesses the blade's momentum to execute a sequence of impactful strikes. The swings gain speed with precise timing, culminating in a potent slash when the button is released at maximum velocity. Last but not least for the warrior weapon skills is Tidal Fury, which administers a formidable counter-attack if the user is struck at the point of activation. Now this counter-attack can withstand incoming strikes from targets, even if the counter-attack itself is unsuccessful. In addition to the 22 weapon and warrior core skills we have discussed, we also know of 5 warrior augments that will be coming to Dragon's Dogma 2 on release day, being Vitality, Impact, Pertinency, Dominance and Intradipity. Vitality is up first and it can be simply described as increasing your maximum health. Impact improves the ability to push and pull targets when grabbing hold, whereas Pertinency improves your ability to break through an opponent's guard. Dominance, on the other hand, augments your knockdown power. And finally, Intrepidity reduces the accumulation of the loss gauge when receiving damage. The Magic Archer vocation shines in distant warfare, employing magical arrows to great effect. Apart from offensive and healing capabilities, magic archers demonstrate proficiency in bolstering their comrades. They possess the ability to acquire a unique skill, enabling them to unleash a devastating assault across a broad radius, albeit at the cost of reducing their own maximum health. To kick things off, let's take a look at the 8 core magic archer skills we have seen in action all of which are new to Dragon's Dogma 2. These are Quickfire, Conversion, Pinpoint Volley, River Shot, Climatic Arrow, Scopic Sight, Tracker Sight, and Protracted Arrow. The first four of the Magic Archer core skills are associated with the Magic Archer's Light Attack, Heavy Attack, and Vocation actions. These are Quickfire, Conversion, Pinpoint Volley, and River Shot. Quickfire is the Magic Archer's base attack, and it lets you loose a bolt in the direction of an enemy. Conversion, on the other hand, is the heavy attack, allowing your Magic Archer to switch to vocation actions. Pinpoint Volley, on the other hand, which is one of the vocation actions, lets you target multiple enemies, whereas Rivet Shot is how you focus fire on a single enemy combatant. The fifth of the Magic Archer core skills is Climatic Arrow which is described as boosting the damage dealt by Pinpoint Volley and Rivet Shot when released immediately upon fully drawing the bow. The sixth core skill is Scopic Sight, 
which enhances the targeting range while using Pinpoint Volley or River Shot. At number 7 is Tracker Sight, which raises the cap on the maximum number of targets that can be locked onto when employing Pinpoint Volley or River Shot. Last but not least for the Magic Archer core skills is Protracting Arrow, which enables your Magic Archer, immediately following the utilization of Fire, Ice or Lightning weapon skills, to imbue arrows released with Quick Fire, Pinpoint Volley and River Shot with the corresponding element for a brief duration. Moving on from the core skills, within the Dragon's Dogma 2 footage and reveals we have seen a total of 13 Magic Archer weapon skills, two of which have been featured in Dragon's Dogma 1, whereas the remaining 11 are fresh to the DD franchise. The first of which is Frostseeker's Bolt, with which your Arisen shoots a magical ice bolt capable of autonomously tracking and targeting enemies, with the potential to cause frostbite on enemies that are hit. Whereas Frost Hunter Bolt is the upgraded version of Frostseeker Bolt, which simply serves to prolong the effect from Frostseeker's Bolt. The third of the Magic Archer weapon skills is Irradiant Orb, with which you launch a blazing orb that lights up the surroundings and may ignite enemies upon contact, with the duration of its effect determined by the amount of time you spend charging the skill. Irradiant Orb then upgrades to Candescent Orb, further extending the period of time for those effects. The next two Magic Archer weapon skills are returning from Dragon's Dogma 1, in Ricochet Seeker and Ricochet Hunter, with the former described as unleashing a magical arrow that gains power as it ricochets off of walls, particularly effective in tight spaces, whereas Ricochet Hunter is a superior version of Ricochet Seeker, prolonging the arrow's magical effects. The bolts fired with these ricochet skills are imbued with thunder element magic and lack any physical component whatsoever. As such, traditionally these ricochet spells are ineffective against griffins and useless against phantasms and all forms of golems. In contrast, however, against a cyclops even a single hit would cause good damage and usually cause the creature to drop its club or be stunned. The seventh Magic Archer weapon skill is Sedative Bolt, which projects a magical bolt that increases the target's sleep status upon impact, with the amount escalating with charge time. Firing multiple bolts into a target is recommended for maximum effectiveness due to the variable nature of the sleep status. Next up is Flame Fang Arrow, which fires an arrow imbued with magical flames that detonates upon impact. In addition, the Arisen also has full control over the flight of the arrow prior to impact. The ninth weapon skill is Hailstone Bolt, which shoots a chunk of ice that expands in size with charging, dealing a hefty blow to struck foes. So if you've ever felt like shooting a mini iceberg at an enemy, then I guess this is the skill for you. Next up is Spark Chain Stake, which releases a stake infused with magical lightning, piercing enemies or the ground, whereas the proximity between these stakes triggers crackling bolts, damaging nearby foes. And as such, obviously an excellent skill for battlefield control. The 11th weapon skill we are going to be talking about is Remedy Arrow, which fires an arrow infused with magic capable of reviving fallen allies when fully charged. However, premature release of these arrows restores health instead of reviving allies. Remedy Arrow can also be upgraded to Recovery Arrow, which in effect reduces the amount of time required to fully charge its magical effects. The last of the Magic Archer weapon skills we have seen thus far is Vimtaking Arrow, with which your Arisen looses a hexed arrow that drains the health of enemies in its path transferring this leached life to your allied pawns. And the amount of health that is recovered scales with the number of targets that is hit by this arrow. Last but certainly not least are the five augments we have seen thus far for the Magic Archer. These are Sustainment, Veracity, Prolificity, Ascendancy and Amelioration. 
The first of which is sustainment, which is described as enhancing both the physical and magical defenses of allied pawns in your party. Veracity, on the other hand, will restore a minor amount of stamina upon delivering the finishing blow to an enemy combatant. And unfortunately for the three remaining augments in Prolificy, Ascendancy and Amelioration, we don't have any description as of yet. First off, we'll be looking at all of the core Mystic Spearhand skills, of which we have seen 8 in action thus far all of which are newly created for Dragon's Dogma 2's duo spear-wielding Jedi Master. These are Twine Cut, Magic Cut, Redoubted Bolt, Forbding Bolt, Scattering Bolt, Quick Fot, Ferine Bolt and Winding Cut. The first of the core Mystic Spearhand skills we're going to have a look at is Twine Cut, which is the Spearhand's light attack. And upon activation, you can see your spear hand swinging and twirling the twin bladed staff, delivering slashes with each of the opposite sides of the spinning spear. Next up is the mystic spear hand's heavy attack, with which he plunges the spear into a single target, culminating in an explosion of magical energy at the end of the skill's animation. The third core skill is the vocation action called Redoubted Bolt which unleashes a magical burst introducing no damage but causing targets to flinch and is usable whilst the Mystic Spear Hand is in motion. Next up is Forbading Bolt, which modifies the effect of Redoubted Bolt to impede the target's movement instead. Charging this magical attack prior to release prolongs its effect and the magic can be charged while engaging with others. Next is the Scattering Bolt skill, which in essence scatters the Forbading Bolt after release, entangling nearby hostile targets and immobilizing them, with any direct hits on targets prolonging its restraint effect. Next is Quick Fot, which when activated instantly closes the distance to a target struck by Forbading Bolt or Scattering Bolt, adding a huge amount of mobility to the Mystic Spear Hands arsenal. The 8th core Mystic Spear Hands skill is Ferin Bolt, which expands the effective range of Redoubted Bolt. And the final of the core skills we are going to be talking about today is Winding Cut, which when activated by the Mystic Spear Hand swings the duo spear forward, twirling and slashing through targets continuously. Pressing the activation button repeatedly at this point in time increases the duo spear spinning speed. And Winding Cut is also usable while moving. Moving on to the Mystic Spearhand weapon skills that we have spotted thus far in the Dragon's Dogma 2 footage, we've been able to identify 13 different new skills, none of which have any analogy from DD1. The first of the Mystic Spearhand weapon skills is Dragoon Stabber, for which we don't currently have any official description. However, we can discern what it's all about from the upgraded version in Dragoon's Foin. And we can see that upon activation, your Arisen will cover a huge amount of distance between yourself and a single target, ending with a lunging thrust using the Duo Spear. Whereas Dragoon's Foin further enhances Dragoon Stabber, enabling the user to traverse greater distances while imparting magical damage with the Forceful Jab. Next is Setching Blade which upon activation creates a number of magical blades that are hurled at an enemy assailant when coming into close combat range. The advanced version of this in Setching Storm increases the number of magical blades conjured, all of which also come at a decreased stamina cost. Next up is the Mystic Spearhand skill Humble Offering, which manipulates nearby objects hurling them towards the nearest hostile target. It can also elevate and propel smaller flinching hostile targets, like those that are currently under the effect of the Redoubting Bolt skill. Next up is the Thef's Hand Weapon skill, which upon activation drains the vitality of targets and converts it into stamina for the user. However, Thef's Hand also states that it is not usable against targets lacking a corporeal form. The upgraded version of Thev's Hond is Ravenor's Hond, which in essence just accelerates the amount of stamina recovery from the base Thev's Hond version. 
Next up is the Mystic Spearhand weapon skill, Myra's Vesture, which raises a magical barrier around the user and nearby allies, albeit for a brief duration. Each of these barriers nullifies all forms of attacks whilst the skill is active. The eighth weapon skill is called Skidragoon's Fangtooth, which upon activation has your Arisen swiftly ascend into the air before descending rapidly, Duo Spear at the ready, whereas Skidragoon's Fangtooth damage also scales when your Mystic Spear Hand manages to evade any incoming attacks. Unto Sky is the next weapon skill, and this propels smaller targets significant distances, removing them forcefully from battle. However, these yeeted targets do not yield any experience nor do they drop any items. Larger targets, however, remain unaffected, but do take a fairly decent amount of damage in the process. Second to last for the weapon skills is Wild Fury, which is described as creating a double out of magic, dealing both magic and physical damage. Wild Fury can also only be taught by a maester, However, at the moment we don't know any more about the skill. Last but not least is Magic Spera Pelote, for which we don't have any official description or gameplay footage of it in action in order to discern what it's all about. I guess we'll just have to wait until launch to see how this works. Finally, we also know of 5 augments thus far the Mystic Spear Hand will be able to choose from, being Conveyance, Opulence, Polarity, Refulgence, and Athleticism. Conveyance is up first and it is described as hastening movement speed while carrying or lifting. Opulence, on the other hand, increases gold obtained when acquiring gold pouches. And the three remaining augments we don't have any description for in DD2. However, Athleticism is a returning augment from DD1 which is described within as reducing the stamina consumed whilst running. To start things off, let's take a look at the 9 core trickster skills we have seen in action thus far, all of which are new to Dragon's Dogma 2. These are Bevailing Fumes, Effigil Incense, Invoking Incense, Effigil Snuff, Enthralling Aroma, Mending Vapor, Drifting Broom, Effigil Quickburn, and Trailing Aroma. First of which is Bevailing Fumes, the trickster's light attack, building aggros on enemies that are hit by these attacks, and this serves as the basic setup for all other trickster skills. Second is Effigial Incense, which is the trickster's heavy attack, creating an illusionary clone with which you can kite enemies, having them run after your mirror image, drawing attention away from other party members. Your Spectral Simulacrum can also be teleported to other locations and works in conjunction with other illusionary weapon skills that we will cover later. The third core trickster skill is its vocation action Invoking Essence, with which you move your clone to your position or drag it along the path you are running by holding down the activation button. The fourth is Effigial Snuff, which dismisses your clone whilst you are not in combat or using it, whereas the fifth is Enthralling Aroma, which appears to possibly induce enemy infighting. Activating this by holding down the vocation action while the clone is active replaces Effigial Snuff. Mending Vapor is up next, which gradually restores damage inflicted upon a simulacrum while summoning it back to the caster's side whereas the skill Drifting Broom swings the sensor to generate a dense cloud of smoke, then releases it towards the target. This smoke can travel through nearby enemies, attracting their attention upon engulfing them. The next core trickster skill is Effigial Quickburn, which accelerates the process of creating a simulacrum when casting Effigial Incense, whereas the final of the trickster core skills is Trailing Aroma, which increases the range of your simulacrum formed by Effigil Incense and enables your clone to travel away from the user. Then, in addition to the 9 core skills, we have also seen 10 trickster weapon skills in DD2's footage and reveals thus far, all of which are obviously new to the Dragon's Dogma franchise. These are Sweeping Shroud, Suffocating Shroud, Delusionary Screen, 
Elusive Divider, Aromatic Rally, Aromatic Resurgence, Espiel Incense, Visitant Aura, Tricky Terrace and Dragon's Delusion. The first trickster weapon skill is Sweeping Shroud, which spreads smoke widely, drawing the attention of any targets within its reach. If if a dual incense is deployed at that point in time, targets will also be lured towards the decoy instead. Whereas Suffocating Shroud is the upgraded version of Sweeping Shroud. However, it is not perfectly clear at this point in time how Suffocating Shroud improves upon the basic skill. The third trickster weapon skill is Delusionary Screen, which summons an illusionary wall that impedes the movement and obstructs the vision of hostile targets. This wall fades away after a duration of time. Whereas Elusive Divider again is the upgraded version of Delusionary Screen, however we don't know exactly what that's all about. Aromatic Rally is the fifth weapon skill for the trickster with which your Arisen releases incense within a large vicinity, increasing the offensive powers of touched allies and enabling them to persist in combat even after their health is depleted. However, allies' health gradually decline while under its influence. Aromatic Resurgence, the sixth skill, is an advanced version of Aromatic Rally. However, we again don't know how this improves upon the base version. Espiel Incense is then up next, which severs the caster spirit from their physical body by inhaling a unique incense. This ethereal spirit can then be maneuvered and utilized for clandestine reconnaissance of distant locations, whilst consuming stamina during its activation. Visitant Aura is then the upgraded version of Espiel Essence, but we don't have any details on that at the moment. Whereas the ninth skill in Tricky Terrace creates an illusionary horizontal platform, which can be used to inflict fall damage onto enemies that you lure onto it. Last but not least for the trickster weapon skills is Dragon's Delusion, which inflicts a huge amount of knockdown onto all assailants within its area. Last but not least, I've also spotted five unique trickster augments, namely Detection, Enlightenment, Fugacity, Obfuscation and Allure. And again we have limited information available, with only Detection and Enlightenment having proper descriptions available. The former alerts you to the presence of any Seekers tokens or Wakestone shards in the vicinity with a sound and blinking light, whereas the latter in Enlightenment is described as increasing your chances of creating one or more of the resulting products when combining materials. Whereas Fugacity, Obfuscation and Allure don't have any in-game descriptions known to us at this point. And with that, that's going to be it for this pre-launch series. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciated every view and I love engaging with all of you in the comments. Stay nerdy.